Welcome to the Brunch Breakdown. It's Didi out here in Los Angeles. Chris is in. I'm in our guest room in, <laughs> in studio number five, trying to make this work. <laughs> Yes, Chris is in another studio, hoping that his daughter doesn't come barreling through the door. <laughs> but uh, I'm very happy that if she does, your door is like in plain sight. Because usually we can't see your door. But like if she yeah. comes busting through the door, yeah. it's right there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'm super excited about that. And uh, Dan is somewhere like I actually I hate that dude. I got to be honest. Like. <laughs> All him and Shannon, him and Shannon haven't posted a picture of each other on their honeymoon. They've just posted pictures saying, we have a better view from where we are than you have. Oh, yeah. And it's yeah, very yeah. annoying. Yeah, it's like uh, it's like one a day and mm -hmm. it's like some like artsy, like not even you can't even see their face in the photo. It's just like the back of them and then like mountains and ocean. And yeah. Yeah, it just annoying like it's just like because shannon like posts a picture of like trees and i'm just like those are the most beautiful trees i've ever seen in my life <laughs> fuck you shannon <laughs> like <laughs> it's trash and then dan's just like posting like half view half like their own like private jacuzzi or whatever it is yeah. i'm like get guys are trash <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile i'm hanging out and i'm hiding in my guest room <laughs> there's a baby's bassinet behind me and uh, I'm just like Didi said, terrified that uh, someone will come busting through that door. So if you're listening and you're not watching, hop over to uh, YouTube or Facebook and watch this episode to find out what happens next. <laughs> Well, you can find the brunch breakdown everywhere. Like Chris said on YouTube, you can find it on all of the social medias and you can find it everywhere you listen to podcasts, literally Amazon, Apple, Google, anywhere you will find the brunch breakdown podcast. Dan does this better than any of us do, but yeah, so there you go. Well, uh, now we usually start this podcast with a cold open, but today I wanted to start out because last week was a weird one. So if you're wondering like where, where were the posts, where were the, you know, where were all of our videos? It was just a weird week to post stuff. Don't you think Chris? Cause I know like you kind of do that, like with your own stuff at Chris Gates fitness, it was just a very weird week to like post anything. So it felt like we were just like, all right, episodes out. This is weird. Yeah. It, um, I don't know. <sighs> but with you, but the stuff that happened in Texas, like it hit everybody emotionally in some way. And I think like, sometimes you just don't feel like laughing or even posting something that would take away from the seriousness of what was going on. Yeah, it was, um, cause it was weird. Cause at one point I thought about like posting something, but then I was like, am I just kind of like getting in the way of like, cause I have friends who are like really into movements and stuff like that and it's like if i just post this goofy thing of us talking about whatever like is, am i just getting in the way of someone who actually has something to say you know yeah just a weird week in that regard yeah no and i hear what you're saying and like part of the reason i didn't post is because like i feel like we move on so quick from this stuff and i'm kind of like sick of that and this is even like you know when we do get it off our chest like this is what i wanted to talk about today because like i feel like we we see these horrific things happen so often that like we just move on from them and it, i mean you have to you have to move on you have to keep living your life but at the same time it's like the, the stuff with the kid when, when it happens to kids it's just like so, now that i'm a parent you know i've been a parent for almost two years now it's like it was so much more emotional um and I, I i've even felt this week where like i've i've felt like it that incident i'm still thinking about it but it's kind of i'm not thinking about it as much as i did last week and i don't like that i don't like the fact that it's starting to filter out of my brain not because i want to always be sad and, and miserable and think about terrible things but it's like this is why this stuff keeps put in part keeps happening is because we move on from it we go back to our lives. We stop talking about it, nothing changes. And then it just keeps happening over and over and over again. So like when you post things, when stuff like that is going on, um, that's why I didn't post like, okay. If I post something about like three cheap and easy, high protein foods <laughs> amidst a disaster like that, I feel like what I'm doing is distracting people or taking away from conversations that are much more serious and much, much more important. 
Yeah. And that's how I felt last week. Just like, okay, I'm going to post this jokey thing where I'm talking about Ray for Alston, which we're going to do here in a little bit. <laughs> but like, I, I just felt weird about that. Like, so I just, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. And like you said, and I guess, cause we, I knew we both were going to talk about the same thing for getting yeah. off our chest because yeah. of like what I saw you post on Instagram this past week, just about just like feeling weird and just being like, whatever. But yeah, like, it's so crazy. And it's not that other people, you know, who aren't parents don't have this feeling, but it is a very weird feeling when you drop your kids off at daycare or preschool or whatever. And like, you don't think anything is going to happen to them. And then for those what 18 kids and teachers or whatever, like in Texas, like that didn't happen. Yeah. They didn't come home. You know what I mean? Or they got some crazy phone call. And I just, it just stuck with me because even we, when we recorded last week, did you know the shooting happened when we recorded? Because Mm -hmm. I had just found out, like literally I walked in the door, um, Siobhan had sent me a text saying something like that. And then like, and then we, then I sat down at the computer and then we started. Like I had no idea what was going on. It was the same thing for me, man. Like I, um, behind the scenes brunch breakdown i handle the recording of the episode so like i have a bunch of windows open and one of them had twitter open and right before we started i saw in like the trending thing uvalde school shooting and like i they, we didn't i didn't have time to dive in to see like what the details were so i just saw it and like we jumped in right and then it was after that what after we recorded the episode when you were finally able to read a little bit about what was happening and with these shootings that happen it takes a while for like the real information to come out so it really wasn't until like the next like later that night and then the next morning once like all the details started coming out that that i i realized what was happening and then like you said so you you see you're greeted with that reality and then a couple hours later you have to drop your kid off at daycare and (laughs) dropping my kids off at daycare the next day uh, was more emotional for me than dropping our first child, our daughter, Olivia off at daycare for the first time ever. Like if, if you have a kid or if you don't have a kid, the first time you drop them off at daycare is a very emotional thing <laughs> because like they've been at home constantly. You're sending them to this place where other people are going to watch them. And you, you don't know how good those people are. You, over time you get comfortable with the situation, but that's a very emotional thing to drop your first kid off at daycare. And then when we, when I, I did that, I did drop off the next day. I, that was the mo- that was 10 times more emotional for me than that first time we dropped her off. Yeah. And it's cause it's just this feeling of like not knowing it's not cause it's a weird feeling of like, do I really think something's going to happen? Yeah. No. Right. But it's just in the back of your head, you know that like Evaldi's no different than where you live. It's no like any, you know what I mean? Like any of these places where these shootings happen and there's been a lot in the last few weeks. Hell, there was one last night at a hospital. Yeah. Like all these places, like none of them, you're not unique to any of them. Like these places aren't unique. These places are just everywhere now. So it's it's weird, but like another behind the scenes of the brunch breakdown thing, like the text message I got from Siobhan was like, she said to me, go get the kids. And I was like, and I just kind of ignored it. Cause I was like, okay, like she's kind of like, you know, messing with me. And she was, but if she would have said it a second time, <laughs> I would have had to be like, guys, I gotta go get the kids yeah. because I like who, I, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's yeah. one of those things where it's like, this just happened at an elementary school. My wife says, uh, I think you need to go get the kids. And I'm like, no but let's see and then you know she didn't say anything after that but i was like you know and i even told her after i was like you know if you would have said it again i would have been like all right guys i gotta go get the kids right yeah 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 that's crazy yeah i uh i had a feeling we were both gonna talk about this too and like i don't know man i don't know and and I, I'm not into like the getting into the political discussions about because I I'm not even smart enough to know I know that there's legislation nope. out there bills that haven't been passed but they're on the table like I've heard about it I don't know the details of it um, people are very it's a very polarizing topic to talk about gun control and that type of stuff 
I don't really have strong opinions on that either, but I just know like this, this shit can't keep happening. And so like the conversation about this stuff can't stop. And it actually has made me think about how, like, you know, sometimes we get annoyed or mad about the fact that like celebrities, athletes, people like that, that have very big platforms um, often talk about issues and this incident. And I find myself sometimes thinking about that, you know, but like this incident made me realize as I thought more deeply about it, how important it is depending on the issue to have some of those people continue to put it out there and talk about it. Because like, like I said, this week, I've already, in terms of what I'm talking about, what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about on a daily basis, it, it is start, this incident is starting to fade and, and it really shouldn't. And people should continue to talk about it. We should figure out a way that like you can send your kids to school and not have to have those thoughts it's it's it's, something has to change and and like i said i'm not i'm not here to talk about the brunch breakdown was not brought uh to all of you fine listeners to talk about policy and gun control and stuff like that but something has to change it just has to yeah like i'm not gonna legislate i'm not gonna go do the whole left right up up down playstation politics sides of the whole aisle i'm not gonna do any of that because i don't really care about doing any of that it's just that like you look at some of the because all the answers that people have anytime you see someone talks like one side says every teacher needs to have a gun and i'm like as a kid who drove teachers nuts no teachers don't need to have guns <laughs> um but then it's like then it's like you gotta arm the schools then it's like you gotta take away everything and i'm like there's some way this can happen and you mentioned sports and i'm like if the nfl and like the ncaa were like football season just doesn't start until we figure out some gun leg- legislation it, it happens yeah you know like it, it like or like you know like the nba finals start tonight and like i'm sure they're gonna do like a moment of silence i'm sure they're gonna talk about it but the games are gonna go on yeah like you know what i mean the celtics and warriors are gonna go on and do their thing but it's almost like these things that give us entertainment like just need to be kind of be like sometimes just need to be shut down until we figure this out it's like, okay, figure it out. Make everybody get back in the chambers. No one's on vacation. All these people we elected, it's like, go do your job. And yeah. like, that's all the people we elected. Whether you voted for them or not, they're the people who are like making the decision, your state and your county and whatever it is in the nation. And like, I feel like just, it almost is like stuff needs to stop like it used to when these things happened. Because I don't know, we were both in high school when 9-11 happened and like how, you know, we had way less distractions than we do now. You know what I mean? And so the whole world stops. And it's like when stuff like this happens, it feels like the whole world should stop. Like everything in our lives should kind of stop. But I don't know. But that's as political as I can get. It's just that like we something needs to change and needs to, and we just need to like be able to stop and focus and be like, yeah, let's figure this out. Yeah, didn't the NBA, uh, when they were in the bubble, didn't they actually stop games when uh, the George Floyd thing happened? Was that they, when it, they sit out or something? Yeah, it was when the what happened in Milwaukee. The uh, when that happened because it was like oh, the Bucks yeah. were like we're not Kenosha. playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened there? And it was like we're not playing. And then everyone else was like we're not playing either. And they almost all left the bubble because of it. But it's just when stuff happens i feel like there there needs to be something that happens that gets everyone's attention that gets our politicians like back in because if you stop these things states don't make money like cities don't make money and it's like if it it sucks that we have to like hit people in their pockets for things to change but it's almost like that needs to happen oh yeah i mean why why haven't things changed in part because money in people's pockets so yeah yeah it's crazy but uh but yeah so i feel like that was good off our chest this week yeah <laughs> just that ran was into it. it i knew we were going to talk about it so i was like let's just let's let's just go let's let's just get this going <laughs> yeah and uh well now let's get into bruise day chris what are what beer are you sipping on this week that um i'm probably never going to try <laughs> You might try this one. you actually might have had this one i don't know maybe you haven't but it's just a corona premiere oh okay Pat it. yeah I've, yeah, 
I'm not going to be drinking exciting beers here for a while. But that's okay. Um, this one, it tastes like 10% of a Corona. <laughs> Ten percent of a Corona sounds like um, a beach trip, but like at like a shitty beach. Yeah, it's like like instead of going to like the Florida Keys, you go to Lake Erie. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's such a weird thing. It's like you go to instead of like going to Ocean City, you go to like one of those lakes that are on the way to Ocean City. It's like that's. <laughs> So it's like, you're like 50 miles from it, but like, you're not, you're not going there. Like this yeah. is where you are. Yeah, that's it. That's what I'm drinking. Exactly what I'm drinking. <laughs> All right. Well, what I have is a uh, Let's Brunch Hazy IPA. It is I called it. Let's Brunch Hazy IPA. And it is from Trademark Brewing in Long Beach, California. So like an hour away from me, citrus, orange blossom, juicy peach, I am trying this for the first time, my friend. First time. Let's see how this goes. I'm very excited about this one. I am too. Any beer that has the t- the name brunch in it makes me I, excited. Seriously, I mean, I had to grab it. Had to grab it. It tastes like a mimosa. I don't know if that... It doesn't say anything on the can, because usually when something's supposed to taste like a mimosa, they tell you, but... Yeah, it, it probably will even say like beer mosa on it or something. I know, but yeah, your new brunch buddy is what this says on the can, and I cannot hate on that. This thing is amazing. So, Didi, you're, let's if brunch. You're, if you're going to have a new brunch buddy, you're supposed to consult with me and Dan about that first. <laughs> we, you're not allowed to have new brunch buddies unless we approve. Wow. It uh, sounds I, like it's pretty good. <laughs> I hear you, but this is good. I, I'm kind of mad at myself because I only got one of these because I just like went to – uh like the my favorite six pack shop and just like got like four different beers but now i'm gonna have to go back and just kind of clear this one out because this is <laughs> fire nice. so yeah let's brunch hazy ipa that's what i got for brews day chris uh cheers you're a little reluctant to cheers probably you're like cheers eh, whatever cheers yeah. drinking a corona <laughs> premiere next to my daughter's bassinet what could get better oh gotta love it that's beautiful Beautiful. Well, uh, let's get in to the main course. <sighs> the I'm calling it the N1 mixtape 30 for 30. I know it's got its own title, but I don't care. That's not what this is about. That's not what we're here. This we're here. N1 mixtape 30 for 30 just came out on ESPN this week. And we are huge fans of the N1 mixtape tour. I am a lover. I love it so much. We are huge fans. And that 30 for 30, I thought needed to be 20 more minutes long, Chris. What are, did you think? What are your first impressions of it? I loved it, but I needed it to be like 20 minutes longer. Yeah, I want it. Um, I'm with you. Like, I thought it was slow to start. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought, and I know, I know how much you cherish Ray for Alston. I know how good of a basketball player he is. But I felt like the first half hour was Ray for Alston. And then like the last half hour was trying to fit in like what actually made the and one mixtape tour popular. Yes. You know what I mean? Like he was a big part of it. He got things started, but like there was, I felt like, like the AO was in there. Hot sauce was in there. Like there were some of the guys that I remember, but they also left a lot of the guys out and i know part of the guy part of that era they left out because it was like what they said was when the network big wigs got involved and it became less about the sport more promotional and then it kind of died off in popularity but i felt like there was a point there where like because didn't they do something where like they had like guys battle for a spot on the n1 yep. mixtape like that's when i really got into it, it was like spida and the professor and guys like that and like that for me was the height of it, but I felt like they just left that out completely. And I wanted to hear about it. Yeah. I wanted to hear about that too. I wanted more of the, like, cause it was just weird how it started off really slow and it gave you all the background information. I didn't need to know all the information about and one. I didn't need to know all the information about the dudes from and one. I didn't even really need to hear them talk. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I just didn't. And it was like so much information about and one, the company and how they, you know, 
put the shoes in the one store and all that. And I'm like, eh, okay, I don't need all this. Right. I wanted to hear more from the guys who were on the tour. And like, then the fall of it all happens in like two minutes. Yeah. They just like come back from break. And I'm like, wait, there's like 10 minutes left in this thing. And then it's like, okay, then there's the fall. I needed more of that. Like yeah. I wanted to know more of it when they got mad, because I remember watching the episodes of the and one mixtape tour when people were getting mad when people were leaving the tour and when people were actually starting to get upset about things. And I'm like, I wanted more of that. Like I wanted to know the rise and the fall, not just like the rise and then, all right, it's over. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh, by the way, it, fit, it, it, it fell apart. Okay. Thanks for watching. Like that was a little, <laughs> too, was a little too quick. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm with you. I thought like, I thought it was, it was interesting to hear a little bit of background about and one just knowing just like because i forgot about how and one like and one was many different things it was a basketball mixtape tour and that's what we cared about the most <laughs> but it was also clothing and it was also shoes and i kind of forgot about that so i appreciated like the background there but then like i agree with you i think way too many and one representatives and like marketing people yeah. talked about why they did things the way that they did. And like, I'm not watching this to hear about your bottom line. I'm watching this because I love watching those players. And we got to a point where they were like, they showed the footage of like the guys in the limo. And then they were like challenging the NBA players. And they were like, when you come to the hood, <laughs> you know, things are different. <laughs> and then it ended. It ended yeah. like right after he said that. You can't, you can't. And that was how the commercial ended. So I don't know, maybe they were trying to make those two things the same. Like the commercial ended after he said, you know, things are different, but to tell us, you like, show us more. Then they were just like, yeah. And then like hot sizzle signed autographs and then it fell apart. Yeah. And it was like, and there was, there was so much Ray for Alston and you know, I love Ray for Alston, but there was too much of him. Mm hmm there was too much Ray Ferrellson because like, as he was the person who started the, you know, the, the street ball style, the whole mixtape. And that was the person who launched it. And that was cool to like, that was cool to hear that. Like the person who just was like, I just was filming his stuff. And then all of a sudden they were just like, Hey, why don't you put this to music? And I thought that part was cool. Just like making the first initial mixtape. But then I, I didn't need, I didn't really need to see Ray Ferrellson's like NBA career. I didn't really need to see all that in like the, in this whole thing, but like, it was cool. He was on it. it but I also felt vindicated too, because like, <laughs> I've been like, I've never felt vindicated watching a 30 for 30. This is probably how people who were like really into the OJ trial in the nineties, like felt after watching it. were like, see, I told you, I told you this whole time. He did it. He, he did it. And it was so awesome for me, like watching Kyrie Irving just talk about the and one mixtape tour. Cause I say it all the time. And I had so many tweets that just like have like one like on it, no likes on it, where I'm just like, this is all and one. I'm sorry. This is all and one. And like Steph Curry and they're showing all the highlights. I felt vindicated watching it because I've just been saying it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Basketball didn't look like this before. Like it just didn't. And it was cool hearing those guys say it. I, I love that. I just love watching them say that. I was very tempted to text you while I was watching it and say like, okay, so Rafer's back on the Mount Rushmore, right? Like that's, is that, is that what we're starting the, the oh, he's there. with? <laughs> yep. He's there. Absolutely. It's LeBron, Michael Jordan, Rafer Alston and uh, Kobe. That's it. That's what you got. That's my route. That's my Mount Rushmore. One, all, all one in the same. <laughs> all absolutely. All one in the same. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was cool. It, I, I mean, I, I really liked it. I thought it was good. I thought it got better as it went along. Um, but I did want, I did want more about like the, I can't say new age because it's old, but like the final years of the mixtape tour. And like, like you said, what happened? Why did it fall? But let's talk more about why it fell apart and what those guys are doing now. Like I couldn't believe the professor wasn't in there. I, at all. Yeah, I like, yeah, because they really just kept it the guys who were on that like first part of the mixtape tour. And I was like, but how do you not have like Spider on here? Mm -hmm. How do you not have the professor on here? Like, I don't, I don't understand how you don't have those two on there because they're so important to that. 
Like the yeah. professor, I don't know if you follow uh, him on Instagram, but he's awesome follow on Instagram. Yeah. Like Worldwide Hooper, I think it's his name on there. He's awesome. And he's doing like promos for the NBA finals. So he's still yeah. part of the basketball world. Oh yeah, to put absolutely. Him the, put him in the uh, documentary. But yeah. hey, there was a The You Part Two. So maybe if we petition it enough, we can get And One Part Two. Oh, we need, we need it. We need it. We need it. I need all, like, there has to be so much more footage of what they had to, like, cut from this. I need more of it. Yeah. Like, I really do need more of this stuff, and I need less about it. But that's the thing. Sometimes with 30 for 30s, like, I felt this way about the the Catholics versus convicts 30 for 30. Yeah. Like, I thought the Notre Dame-Miami thing on, from somebody way from the outside looking in, because this happened like either like right after I was born or whatever, when this was happening, like the eighties and like early nineties and stuff. Like, so I only saw that from just other people's stories and like, whatever. So I was really excited to watch it. Then the 30 for 30 was about dorks who made t-shirts. Yeah. Like <laughs> it was, that, one, that one was, it was it's like just, more about this guy's underground t-shirt business yeah. than the football game. <laughs> It was so freaking stupid. I was so annoyed by that. I was just like, I was so excited to watch that 30 for 30 because I've heard so much about this. And then it was about dorks who made t-shirts. And that's how I felt while watching this. I was like, because the first like probably 20 minutes or so, I'm like, oh no, they're Catholics versus convict me on this. I'm terrified. This is bad. <laughs> and then it picks up and it goes well and then kind of ends like out of nowhere. But man. I was really nervous, but I don't know why 30 for 30 kind of does that. Sometimes they get these subjects and they're obsessed with that. And I'm like, I think you needed to like screen this for like, I don't know me or you and be like, "Hey, how about we, we cut these guys out. Right. Read, read the room, read the room. Yeah. Talk to your audience a little bit more. Um, Two, two final observations I had Uh, one. This isn't going to surprise you. I miss the baggy pants generation. I do. (laughs) I do. I love, I love the era that we grew up in. And two, no disrespect to Ann one and what they created, but it reminded me of how hideous I thought their clothing was back in the <laughs> Every single pair of shorts had that gigantic, like thick white line on the outside that like came to a awkward point. Like I always hated the look of their clothing <laughs> despite the fact that I loved watching that mixtape tour. They had that big gray man <laughs> yeah. on everything. And yeah. that is what I was reminded of. I completely forgot about that big gray man mm-hmm. who was on every single piece of and one clothing. And some of it was just like his arm would be on the clothing. It wasn't even like, oh my. Yeah. Who was, who was that modeled after? I want to know who that, that like, that fictitious person was the caricature. What was it built off of? We need to know that. And one part two, we need to know that as well. See, these are things we need to know. But yeah, uh, I also thought one thing I did think was interesting was um, when they were talking about putting, but I didn't need this in the doc. This was just cool to know. I would, I would, this would have been great to hear on a podcast. Was like how they put the TVs in the sneaker store yeah. and they had like the mixtapes playing. And I'm like, oh man, like, cause everything's copycat when they see it. And it's like, that's just how every sneaker store was back when you had to go to the store to go get sneakers. It was like yeah. every Foot Locker had TVs in it with tapes, you know, with music videos playing or basketball playing or whatever it was. And it's like, oh, so that was like what started that, which is kind of crazy to know. It is like, that's literally what started just playing mixtapes on TVs at a random store. So yeah. I'm with you. And like, also how, like you mentioned this earlier, how like, you see a lot of and one in the NBA now. And like, they talk about that in the documentary as well. Um, it also made me think about how, like, they're just have like, we, we kind of make fun of a lot of these offshoot leagues that happen in sports because they're never going to make it right. Mm-hmm. And they never do, but there's almost always something that comes from them that gets adopted by the bigger, more sustainable league. And like, I thought about the XFL and all the crazy shit they did back in the day where they had like cameramen running out with hockey helmets on (laughs) going onto the field. And now we have that better technology, more rules around it. But like, we have all of those, you know, same camera angles and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, uh, maybe this is my, my, uh, petition for everybody to, 
start watching the USFL this summer because you're going to see something in the NFL based on this league that is guaranteed to fail, but we might as well watch it while we can. Dude, you're right about that. Cause it, cause the XFL, uh, the 30 for 30 was like that. And it was just like, Oh man, all these cameras all over the field. And you're like, wait, they completely took that from the XFL. They're like, why yeah. aren't there a bunch of cameras all over the field now? Like we have access to literally every single angle we could possibly want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. And one was like that too. I'm sure somebody from the NBA was watching was like, you know, this whole, this whole, like people are here to watch offense thing. That's, that's really what this is about. All right. Yeah. So, all right. So let's, uh, let's stop the hand checking and stop, like, and stop having scores of like 75, 75 in the NFL and the NBA finals and just freaking, uh, you know, let these guys move a little bit. Yeah. So that yeah. and like, but let's all, let's, let's take it a step further. Let's get the MC back on the court. <laughs> Screaming. Oh baby. Every time there's yes. a dunk, that's what we need. Oh my, I, hearing his voice. Where was he? He wasn't in the dog. He was barely in it. That's what I'm saying. We need an AM1 part two that oh. actually focuses on the stuff that people want to hear about and the stuff that people remember and the stuff that people love. Dude, where was he? Like, he you should've... heard him in the background like two or three times. Because it. it was cool that Jadakiss was the person that like, I get why they had Jadakiss to being the narrator, but you already have a narrator. It's yeah. the guy on the court. He narrated every game for yes. five years. Yes. He was the person that we needed. Um, also, interestingly enough, because usually when you watch 30 for 30s, you see the person in, in, you know, in this day, and they don't look as great as they used to. Everybody on the A1 mixtape tour, surprisingly in good shape still. <laughs> like it's been like 20 years. <laughs> like main event looks better now than he did back then. <laughs> Yeah, they made money, but they did, I feel like they didn't make too much money to get like yeah. too fat and happy. You know, like yeah. they made money to be comfortable, but not to let themselves go. That's true. Cause like, have you, dude, every time I see Keyshawn Johnson, like, <laughs> I, like I laugh so I just am like, my goodness, dude, like you really just got fat and happy. Like you were just <laughs> radio slash TV host and you look it. Like you look like an old radio and TV host. Like that's what yeah. you look like right now. And it's so funny because Keyshawn was one of those like, first tall like built wide receivers like that like those big to type dudes and it's so funny seeing him now but like no one from the n1 mixtape tour looks like that like they all are like nah we're still in shape like they all still look like they can hoop today they probably all kill it at like la fitness shout out yeah that's what it is they're just running game at la fitness uh on the weekends we need maybe that's the the new n1 mixtape that we need it's uh, in public gyms. Ooh, ooh! Can we get? Yeah, the LA Fitness mixtape. Oh God! <laughs> and one LA Fitness. That's actually like a funny like. Uh, that's a funny skit for someone to do. Yeah, that's an SNL skit. Right? Yeah, that's like a hilarious skit for someone to do. Like <laughs> the LA Fitness mixtape tour. <laughs> <laughs> there's all there's gonna be like that one like older white guy who's like six four and is wearing he's wearing <laughs> knee pads and elbow pads and rec but specs. he he can't be stopped he cannot <laughs> be stopped it's unbelievable every gym has one of them every yep. gym every single gym has even if you go to a college campus and like the population in the gym is 90% students. There's going to be a six foot four, 52 year old white man with knee pads and elbow pads running game. And there's nothing those kids can do about it. It doesn't matter. Absolutely. Every court in the world has one (laughs) and it makes no sense, but every court in the world has one. (laughs) Unbelievable. God. Well, I, well, I like the and one big step tour. I just need you guys to not focus that much on, on and one. So just and one the brand, but they're closed. Maybe I'll buy you a shirt. I'm going to find you an and one shirt, get it for you for Christmas. I'm going to find one. I want Etsy. Get some clothes for the kids. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go on there, find you some clothes, find some clothes for the kids. Everyone's just going to be and one. Everyone will have and one on in their Christmas card oh, this there year. Go. Be perfect. <laughs> Well, another thing uh, we're going to talk about, because it's just us two, and Dan is off on his honeymoon, like, just 
trash what a it's, dick it's, it's trash so no literally the regatta is coming up soon right the views of the regatta are better forget saint lucia like come on come on yeah the regatta is coming up like his views aren't that cool like whatever <laughs> anyways uh another thing you wanted to bring up chris you had a it's dad brunch time now you yeah. have a question go for it I do have a question. Um, I actually texted Didi about this a few days ago and he refused to answer because he wanted to answer <laughs> it on the podcast. Um, so my question for you, Didi, is, and, and I want to preface this with, um, I, I do not want to, I don't want this to be perceived as me saying that anything my kids are doing is wrong because it's not. They're <laughs> both under two years old and they don't know what the hell's going on. Um, but I'm, uh, we've entered the phase. Every kid that it seems like has this phase where like uh, virtually everything is a meltdown, right? Like if you have to go do something that the child doesn't want to do, they melt down about it. If you do something fun, they have fun, but then the minute it's over, they have a meltdown about it. So it's like, you can't win either way. Whatever you do during the day is going to result in a meltdown. And so I asked Didi, when does that, how long does it last and when does it end? Uh, I want to say never, but <laughs> I want to say, I'll let you know when it stops. <laughs> but no, because that's honestly what I would have responded to you with. But I've thought about this. I've thought this through. Okay. It will stop in probably... In like a few months, like in about six months, it'll probably stop. And then it will make sense when it happens. And it will be your fault when the meltdowns happen. Because right now it's just emotions. Like they're learning emotions. They understand that they really freaking like something. And they don't know why they can't have that all the time. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like when you show a kid like your phone and they hold the phone. And then you're like, okay, that thing's $1,200 taking it back. Major literally because major does a, like a spin now mm. and then falls on the ground. Ah. Like it's a choreographed dance move, like looks like Usher <laughs> in the 2000s. Like literally is just does a spin, like holds his heart and then just falls down and <laughs> loses it whenever you take anything away from him right now. And it's like, because I've done this before, I can just easily ignore it. But when Sersha was going through it, I was just like, what the fuck is going on? What is wrong? But it's like, because she thinks like she's supposed to have that all the time. Yeah. But like it stops and then it just starts to happen because you forget. So it's like, if you're eating ice cream in front of your kid, you have to give them some. Yeah. Otherwise, they're going to melt down. But otherwise, but you just have to remember that stuff because that's kind of the thing that's happening like, um, with us at this point where it's like, okay, well, I'm going to wait to do this because otherwise we're going to have a meltdown if I don't let, if I just do this, you know? So in a few months it will stop and it will make more sense when the meltdowns happen. Gotcha. And it will most likely be your fault when it happens. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with like the, there being reason. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like if I do something and then like it happens, then I'm like, oh yeah, I'm an idiot. Then like, I'm comfortable with me being an idiot, but like the, <laughs> the phone, the phone one is great. Like she, she loves the phone. Mm -hmm. Wait, she, we, it's not like we give her the phone all the time, but like sometimes you need a little distraction. So you give the kid the phone so you can go like do something that has to get done. Um, but then she'll like throw the phone and I'm like, all right, yeah. well, that, that's eleven hundred dollars. I'm you're no longer allowed to have that phone. And and then it turns into a meltdown, which I understand. Like, I get it. But like. We need to we need to expedite this process. <laughs> <laughs> it just at one point it will stop but by the time it stops, <laughs> the other one will be doing it. That's too. the problem. Yeah, man, <laughs> I'm so I, close. It's not gonna, I'm just, uh, I think, caught in this vortex here for a while. Yeah, cause yeah, that's, it's the throwing the phone when like it won't turn on, when like they close the phone or whatever it is, they throw it. That's what it's like, all right, we're done here now. Yeah, We're done, we're yeah. done. I know but, you yeah. want it, but what you want is not worth $1,100. So we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna, at the very least, screen repair i know from experience for my iphone is 350 dollars, and uh no thank you yeah 
but uh, the meltdowns, they, they do stop and start to make more sense. It's just right now it's all the emotions, everything they've got them all and figuring it out, but it will, it will slow down just in time for Charlotte to start doing the same thing to kick right back. Yeah. For the kick right back in. So, but yeah, we need Olivia to just like, get to a good place before football season starts. Cause then my emotions kick in. I see that. And I don't think Katie deserves all of us to be emotional at the same time. I think that's not fair to her. <laughs> that's not fair. That's actually, that's not fair at all. Cause honestly, sometimes when, um, have you guys figured out who is more like who yet? Who's um, more you? Who's more. Everybody says that they both look more like me. Okay. I think Olivia's. I think Olivia's personality, she's she's very outgoing and that I think more matches Katie. Okay. Um, but like I don't know, I think we're still figuring it out. Yeah. See, yeah, we know, yeah. It's it, it, I feel bad for Siobhan when Sersha does something or when she just keeps talking and she needs people to hear her. Yeah. And she just will not stop talking, whether you're on the phone, whether you're doing anything, or me and Siobhan are talking, she just keeps going. That's all me. She just wants attention. And I feel bad for Siobhan in that regard. Because Major, he's thought out. Like, he, every move he makes is, like, calculated. That's all Siobhan. (laughs) Sersha is like, I don't know what's going through that girl's head all the time. But, like, she knows where she's going. We just don't know. Yeah. But like major, you can see what he's about to do way before, even if he's doing something that's like bad, like he'll grab something and he's about to like hit Sersha with it. We see it from a mile away. Mm. We don't know what Sersha will just literally get shot out of a cannon and run into the wall. And we're like, what the, why did you just <laughs> do that? She doesn't know. She's literally, she's crazy, but yeah, yeah. So, but no, my, my, my daughter's all, all me. Majors all Siobhan. It's just so funny with the kids like that, where you're just like, yeah, like that one's genetics are wild. Cause it's just, you are, oh my God. Yeah. From, I think, I think you said this on the podcast recently that like sometimes Siobhan's just like, she's acting like you, I'm leaving. And so <laughs> from that alone, I figured Sersha has got the, uh, the DD genetics yeah. written yeah. into her code. Yeah. It's, it's wild genetics. <laughs> crazy genetics man genetics good lord <laughs> well chris let's get into uh what we are listening to actually wait before we get into what we're listening to there was a trend on my um facebook and twitter over memorial day weekend bush beer has an apple cider flavor i am familiar with this i have not had it I saw so many people posting this over the weekend and like, I don't have it. Like <laughs> I do not have it. Cause I'm not buying a case of apple cider bush <laughs> beer. Seems like more but of a I was wondering, thing, doesn't it? Yeah. You think, right. But I've been, I saw so many people over Memorial day weekend posting about this and I'm like, Chris, have you, I didn't know if you had seen this thing. I didn't know. I, I don't, I didn't really see a trend uh, about it. I admittedly, I stayed off the internet because of everything we talked about mm-hmm. at the beginning of the episode. Um, I'll say this. Well, Bushlight Apple sounds atrocious. Um, yes. I, I will say though that Bush Light, this is not going to be a popular opinion, but it, it is one of the light beers that I choose. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I haven't I, had Bush in so long I couldn't even tell you. That's fair. I, there's no <laughs> at at our age. There's no reason to have it, Didi. That's very true. <laughs> Unless uh, you're in a in a pinch, but um, I, I the apple no, especially not when it, I mean Jesus Christ, it was 90 degrees here over Memorial Day. Why are you drinking Bush Light Apple when it's 90? That's like yeah. a 65 and cloudy beer. Yeah, yes yes that is not something that i would be drinking like i don't think i'd be drinking bush on the boat in like 90 degrees like <laughs> happy to start summer i don't know yeah i don't know about that one not for me. but yeah we'll have dan try it out when he gets back we'll have dan get the bush light apple oh his That's blind his... T- taste tests are the best yeah oh yeah he's got to do it <laughs> all right well let's get into what we're listening to chris what are you listening to man all right my first one is from a band that I hold 
near and dear to my heart. This band, uh, their name is With The Punches. They're from New York. I found this band originally when I was living in Oregon. And it was like two of their EPs were almost all I listened to when I was out there. And so I have a very like emotional connection to their music based on what I went through at that time of my life. They had since ceased to exist for like six or seven years. Came back, put out an EP called Discontent uh, just last week. And I love it. It's so much of what I loved of this band back in the day. Um, I... I don't know what song I want to put on yet because I just <laughs> continue to listen to it and love each one. I'll figure that out. But uh, Discontent is the EP from With The Punches. Absolutely love this band. They're like a pop punk with more of like an edge, hard, hardcore-ish type of vibe. And uh, I would highly recommend checking them out. Nice. All right. Well, I have what is, I think, the number one album in the country this week. Harry Styles, Harry's House, which album's fine. First five songs are really good. Then it kind of falls off. But anyways, I'm going to put two songs on. Music for a Sushi Restaurant and Late Night Talking are just jams. Like, absolute jams. Especially Late Night Talking. That's just like a, it's just a, just jam. Like, you will absolutely be dancing for that song. So, but yeah, Music for a Sushi Restaurant and Late Night Talking. Harry Styles. Check them out. I love sushi, so. Hey, see, and I don't. I don't know if it made me feel like I'm at a sushi restaurant, but like it's a really good song. So when you're eating sushi, listen to it. Maybe if it didn't make you feel that way, you're going to the wrong sushi restaurants. Oh, didn't think about that. You never know. <laughs> my my, uh, my second one is going to be from somebody I put on this podcast a few times because he does covers the right way. This guy's name is Alex Melton. He just put out a album of pop punk covers it's really cool the name of the album is called hypotheticals and it's like all of these popular pop punk songs and like what if hypothetically they did this differently and it's like one thing for each song different and it totally changes the vibe and the feel of the song but the, you still love the songs there's so many of them that like i'm sure people remember you're so last summer from taking back sunday Everything is all right from Motion City St soundtrack. Stacy's mom was super popular. Uh, the anthem from Good Charlotte. The Rock Show from Blink One Eighty Two. Thanks for the memories from Fall Out Boy. Like, if you enjoyed any of that era, then you should listen to this album once again. I don't know which one I'm gonna put. I think I'm probably gonna put The Rock Show from Blink One Eighty Two on the playlist this week because he did his hypothetical was double time drums. So the drums are twice as fast as they are in the original version of the rock show and it's like so much energy i absolutely love it so i will go with that one nice um there is a song that i don't even remember where i found this song like how it, how it just it probably just ended up like because you know how like when you're listening to like whatever you're on spotify or whatever you're on and it's just like they aggregate music to you somehow like it just shows up at the end of a playlist you just end up accidentally clicking on it i don't know yeah. but anyways uh pm B-A-T-A. I have no idea how you say this person's name. P-M-B-A-T-A. It is. Uh, he's got this song or she's got the song called I Hate Her Boyfriend's Face. And it's just a cool song. I Hate Her Boyfriend's Face. P-M Beta or Pimbata. I have no idea. Dan will know how to say it. I'm, I'm sure, sure he's put it on the podcast before. I'm sure Dan could tell you where he or she is from and their background. So uh -huh. it's like 2005 yeah absolutely but i hate her boyfriend's face i just think it's a really cool song so check it out and that's how i find a lot of music is i listen to the sounds of brunch and then it just sends me to shit yeah because on spotify it just puts songs in the playlist that weren't there like you didn't put them there and it's just yeah. like they're just playing so yeah it's a beautiful thing. The last one I have is from uh, one of my favorite ska bands. They're called Millington. They put out a new song uh, and it's titled Solo. And this is the best song titled Solo since Ayaz was on the radio. Very excited <laughs> to share this with everybody this week. It's always good to have ska on the playlist. So shout out to Millington. Oh my God. Is that Ayaz that did Solo? Am I remembering uh, that? Uh, yes, I believe that's, no, wait, no. 
No, that's Jason Derulo, right? Is it Jason Derulo? Wait, who did solo? I think there's like multiple solo songs I'm thinking of now. We're going to have to put all of them on the playlist. Yeah, we might as well. I'll look, <laughs> I'll look up all of them. <laughs> They'll all get their voice. Um. All right. And then there is a song by Queen Herbie. Uh, it spells the name Q-V-E-E-N. I, Dan is also probably familiar with this. Band. It's really, it's just a really stupid way to spell. Why? But anyways, because you're like Quavine. What are we doing? No, it's it's Queen Herbie. Anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> has this EP out and the song called "F Myself." I'm gonna put on the playlist, and I really, really like it. Um, I don't know why I like songs by like women when they talk about what their life would be like if they were a guy. I like songs. That's my favorite genre. Like Beyonce has like, if I were a boy. I were a boy. Yeah. And like, I like, know like Miranda Lambert has a song like that too. There's just a bunch of people that like, I like, I don't know why. I like those songs when people do it. And it just, I don't know. It's always interesting to hear. So uh, yeah, F Myself is that song on uh, Quavine or Queen Herbie's. Check it out. They should go on tour with Chiverches and Purvis. <laughs> All of Dan's favorite bands. Yes. And however you spell Pumbata. Pumbata. <laughs> I'm, 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 it's yeah. a tour of all artists that don't use vowels in their names. Let's go. Yes. Uh, and here's one last question I have for you, Chris, before we get out of here on the brunch breakdown today. Uh, is there anything that you watch or like listen to when you're like in a crappy mood? They like automatically just like, brings your spirits up you're just like all right gotta do this that's a great question i don't hmm. do you yes i realized this like a couple weeks ago when i am in a mood i go to youtube and like in my favorites i have this video it's Nick Jonas singing Jealous with a gospel choir. <laughs> <laughs> and it just makes me so happy. I did not see that coming. It's amazing. I, dude, neither did I. But like, I was just like in a, I was like bummed out. I'm just like, whatever, just like scrolling through YouTube, like on my TV. And I was just like, and I go to it and I'm like, what? this automatically makes me smile. It makes me happy. It makes me sing. And then I'm just like, all right, go on with the day. I love that. But yeah, I, I do have one. You, you just reminded me because you said going to YouTube. I do go on YouTube and this is really random. I've actually thought about doing this for a get it off your chest segment. Um, because I think whose line is it anyway, is one of the most underrated oh. comedy shows of television history of all time. Yeah. And there are like these compilation videos on YouTube of like outtakes and funniest moments. And if I am like bummed and I did this after the whole Texas thing, just to like get a laugh and I'll pull up one of those videos and spend like five to 10 minutes watching it. And it's guaranteed to make me smile. Oh my God. I might have to do that. Cause I, I, I love whose line whose line was so awesome. Cause it was yeah. always on at like, I don't know those times you're just like randomly up when you're like in your twenties, it was yeah. just on like at two in the morning, like there's Aisha Tyler and like everybody <laughs> just, just making jokes and Wayne Brady doing some shit. So yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a good one. That's a good one. But yeah, it's just, it just, it was just kind of like weirded me out. Like a couple weeks ago, I was just like kind of bummed out. And then it's just like automatically I'm just like on YouTube scrolling. And then I was like, yeah, I'm going to watch this Nick Jonas. Oh my God. Why does this make me so happy? <laughs> god all right well any final thoughts as we get out of here on the 101 episode of the brunch breakdown i just think uh we we need to do we, we need to do what we can to continue the conversation of what we were talking about at the beginning of the episode and we also need to and this is not to make light of that we also need to continue the conversation of getting a second and one documentary Yes. Number one, figure out this gun le legislation. Yeah. Number two, and one, part two. Just need to, I need to hear the professor speak to me. Yes, I do. I'm like, I wonder how he feels. 
about? I went on his social media to like before it came out. I was like, oh, he's got to be promoting it, saying like, hey, what's he's coming up to nothing. <sighs> he's got to be pissed. He's got to be pissed. We should have him on. Mm. We'll reach out. Let's do it. I want to know how he feels because I know how I feel about him not being on. I want him and Spider on the damn thing. I'm pissed. I know. Well, that's the brunch breakdown. 